Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefine Horizons. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I use Trello to help manage some of my business development in my job as a land surveyor. And I'm filming this video to help out my buddy William, actually. William, you know who you are. So I've got Trello open. This is the web app. And as I mentioned before, Trello also has a desktop application that runs on Windows, that runs on Windows 10. And it looks almost exactly the same as the web application, but we're using the web version today. So this is Trello. Actually, when I open my Trello account, it shows me all my boards. I've set up a, uh, just an example board here called uh, Cornerstone Business Development. So we're going to set up uh, some cards in this board for this fictional survey business called Cornerstone. Cornerstone Surveying. Okay. And so in my... Business development board, I have six lists across the top. I have one for current opportunities. That is opportunities that we're currently working on. So they're not a proposal yet, but maybe we're in the process of evaluating the opportunity to decide if we're going to pursue it or we're in the process of putting, uh, putting together a team to pursue the opportunity. So these are things that we're actively working on, but that aren't yet a proposal. So I use a separate board to track business development once it moves into the proposal phase. So this this board is focused on just uh, identifying and cultivating opportunities. The, the future opportunities list is opportunities um, that are still a ways off. So these are six months out or 12 months out, and I just don't want to forget about them. So I want to keep an eye on them. And then as that date approaches where they... Um, and they kind of move into that three month window or so. I'll move them over to the current opportunities list. Activities the activities list is just a list I use to track um, all the different business development activities that I'm doing or that members of my team are doing. And I'll show you how that works here in a little bit. And then I have a list for clients there's public sector clients and private sector. Each client gets a card. And I'll show you how that works too on these. We'll, we'll add a couple cards. And then I just finally, if I have an opportunity that either has uh, matured into a proposal or we decided for one reason or another that we're not going to pursue it, I'll just move it over here in the archive list for a while before I delete it. Okay, so those are the six lists. So let's go ahead and add a, a couple cards. So uh, I'm going to put a public sector client in here. City of... McCall uh, me bluffs okay and uh, we're gonna put in here the McCall me uh, river irrigation company okay and then uh, on clients we'll put a uh, build it right architects okay so anytime I get a new client or potential client, uh, they get their own card, and those cards stay here. They usually, they don't typically ever go away. Uh, so these are permanent cards. And uh, if you use Trello, you know you can drag these cards around. So in every card, I like to go in on the description area here of the card, and I like to put the point of contact. So this is Dave Beards. And I'll put his email usually, dbeards at mokebluffs.org. And then a phone number. Okay, and I'll save that. So I always like to keep my primary contact info right here. And if you want, you could put a little description of the agency in here. I don't need to do that. I know who these folks are. Okay. So that's how you add a client card. And then let's go ahead and we'll add a card for a current opportunity. Okay. So this is going to be uh, McCollamy Bluffs Main Street sidewalk improvements 
Okay, that's the name of the opportunity. Then I'll go into this card. What I like to do here is I like to set up a system of labels. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and create some labels just so I can categorize these opportunities. Okay. Um, Okay, so I'm just creating a set of labels now so I can categorize these and then uh, I don't want all these on uh, so this opportunity will be a street project so I'm just gonna give it that streets label so that I know that okay and then what I like to do in my opportunities usually is they've got this due date here I will add a, um, a date uh, so usually this is the date the proposals do it could be the last data day for questions maybe so we'll say this one's due on the 16th so I've got a due date there now assigned to that. It shows up right here. And if you wanted to, you could go in, for example, and attach a copy of the RFP to this card as well if you wanted to do that. Or uh, you can attach a link. Okay. And then what, I, what I'll try and do is I'll try and update these comments. So uh, on this opportunity, I might say... Um, talk to... Sarah Travis at uh, Sierra Foothills Transportation about uh, forming a team to pursue the opportunity. And then I like to put a, actually, I like to put a, the date in front of that. Uh, okay, and I'll save that. And then maybe I'll have, maybe have another comment here. Maybe, uh, spoke to Dave Beards at the city about clarifying mapping limits and the RFP okay so down below here in activity this gives you a chrono chronological list it's in reverse order of all the activity so you can see right here it tells me that it landed Blake three minutes ago added the card then he set the due date, and then I've, I've got these comments that I've added. Um, and if you don't want to see these kind of auto-generated comments, you can just hit the high details there, okay, which I usually do that. So what this does now is this allows anybody that's working with you on your business development team, and you can share this board. Multiple people can, can use this board. In fact, you can as even assign members to cards if you want to do that. Uh, but what it allows the, that person to do is open this opportunity and see all the recent activity on the project, okay, so that we're not, we're not going to duplicate effort. Or forget anything and I'll do one more we'll do a future opportunity okay so I'm gonna do uh, I'll call me bluffs uh, Ashley Creek flood zone revisions And uh, we'll go in and assign it that label, flood hazards. Okay. And we can say um, today's date. Uh, and we'll just note um, on the January 1st, 16, city council meeting. Staff announced the RFP for this project will be out on May 1st, 2018. 
So I'm going to save that. Then I'm going to go ahead and set the due date of May 1st so I don't forget about it. Okay. And if you have some things where you've uh, where you've set up some due dates, if you uh, if you have the uh, if you pay the small monthly fee, I think it's nine dollars a user, ten dollars a user for the pro version. They've actually got a calendar view, which is pretty handy. Let's see if I can find it here. Power ups. Uh, I got to remember how to do it now. <laughs> Let me think for a minute. How did I do that? I tell you what, let me pause the video and figure out how you bring up. I can't remember how you bring up the calendar view. All right, guys, sorry about that. So let me show you how to enable your calendar power up. If you haven't done that, I didn't have it enabled. So you, you click in your menu here on your board, you go to power ups, and then you just search for calendar. Okay, and you want to make sure you click on this, it gets a little green check mark that enables the calendar. Okay, and the other one that I like to use is the power um, the power up for custom fields. It's another built-in Trello one. Custom fields, just click that. Okay. So now you'll see I've got this calendar view I can click, and uh, it provides me a calendar view. And anything that has a date assigned to it, a due date's gonna pop up in your calendar view. So it's pretty handy for something like this where you're going to have a lot of dates. Um, now I also added custom fields. And so we can go ahead and create a custom field here for opportunities. I'm going to put on here last day for questions because that's usually, uh, they'll usually assign the last day you have to, to ask questions. And uh, we're going to make that a date and we'll save it. Okay. And so now I've got a custom field here I can... Um, input what the last day of questions will be for this opportunity. So, see the last day for questions is May 25th. Okay, and now that will show up. So those custom fields are pretty handy too. Okay, so the activities board is what I use to just keep track of all my activities. And so, uh, those are usually activities that are either listed for a client or on an opportunity. Now, one thing that's a little, uh, it's not exactly elegant in Trello, so some of you guys are not going to like this. <laughs> this uh, this is not super great data management, but because um, you got you got a duplicate effort here. But what I like to do when I enter an activity is I also like to I like to log that here as a card. Okay, so I just copy that text and add it as a card, and then I also I like to keep track of when I'm um, actually interacting with the client okay so uh, we'll do the same thing here okay that's actually not an activity but I had another one on here okay so this is an activity I talked with Sarah Travis about forming a team now that won't go on the client card because it wasn't direct communication with the client but I will put it in my general activity board and uh, I just actually realized it'd be good to have another list here. I'm going to add a list for business partners. Okay, and now we can make one for uh, Sierra Foothills Transportation. So these are folks that we'll team with on a project or use as a sub. Um, they're not clients necessarily, although they could be. And so uh, we'll add that activity there. Okay, so the reason I do that is I like to have this just chronological list. What did I do last week? for business development or what did my team do? You can quickly see that here, right? And then uh, I also like to be able to open up a client and get a chronological list of all, all the times we've reached out to, to, uh, to touch this client, to talk to this client. Make sure that we're not harassing them or that, uh, you know, maybe you open this up and you see you haven't reached out to somebody in a long time. So you want to go ahead and, um, and, and uh, maybe schedule a lunch or a phone call. And so that's how I use the, uh, that's why I try and keep track of these activities on the actual cards for the clients. And we'll also mention that, um, oh, let's see, we should be able to attach other cards. So we can attach a card. This is the McCollamy uh, Bluffs Main Street Sidewalk Improvement. We could actually attach a card to that. So we could attach... Uh, Uh, 
uh, we could attach the, the city's card, client card to this. But actually, to me, it makes sense that there's uh, what we would actually want to do is go in and we'd, we would attach every proposal, every opportunity that we track for the city, we could easily attach here to the card. Okay. So you can open that up and just see that. But you can also filter. You can also search and filter. So you could look for, uh, if you want to just search this board for McCombie Bluffs, it'll give you a list of all the cards that have that term in it. Okay. Um, and you can also uh, you can also filter by label and search by label. So if I type in flood hazard there, oh, I didn't find it. Uh, and you can save these searches too. So hang on one sec. I'm going to pause the video. All right. Sorry about that, guys. I had to take a quick quick break there so I could figure out how to do this. So if you want, if you want to search or filter your board by your labels, you can do that. Um, so if you, if you open up your menu and then click. Uh, click this filter cards left click on that then you can type in the name to uh, type in the first few letters of the name of the filter and then it'll let you filter so you just see um, cards with that label okay all right so that's a, a handy way to filter and then you can just turn your filter off too and then uh, one other thing I didn't show you is right down here it does keep a list of activities on a board See everything that's happening on this board it gives you a chronological list there. Okay, now I will show you here. There's a couple of help links. This shows you how to use the calendar power up, and this one shows you how to filter cards on a board. So I will uh, make sure I paste those two links in the uh, the description for this video on YouTube. Okay. So after, uh, let's say, one of these opportunities moves into a proposal, what I do is I just drag it over to the archive. And I'll uh, I'll leave it there. Okay, so that kind of shows you how I use this board just to keep track of opportunities and uh, keep track of how I'm interacting with the client on uh, business development items. Okay, so Trello is a very powerful tool for that. William, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this was a little easier to follow than the first one I did. And uh, we'll do some more. We'll do some more videos on how to use Trello. It's a really powerful tool, and and uh, I enjoy using it very much.